Major breaking news on that deadly explosion in the Sunset District that happened on Thursday morning. And for about the past day, we have been wondering what might have caused it and if anybody would be held responsible. Our Betty you live tonight in the Sunset with some new details on this. Betty, what have you learned? Well, Sarah, we just learned from SFPD that they have arrested a 53-year-old resident for manslaughter, manufacturing drugs, and two counts of child endangerment. Now, many residents in this area are wondering just what was going on in that home. Many suspected that the explosion had something to do with drugs. Tonight, a source with SFPD said they suspect the suspect was making hash oil. Yeah, that, that part's... Uh the, the uh, ceiling uh, in the living room. Michael Mason showed us his childhood home, which is still owned by his grandparents. Their tenant lives right next door to the home that exploded Thursday. The explosion and fire killed one woman and injured two people, including a firefighter. The tenant wasn't home at the time, but like many neighbors, today they're dealing with catastrophic damages and repairs as questions linger. I saw the canisters last night on the news, like the pictures of it posted from one of the other residents in the area. And it, I mean, obviously, there was something going on there that wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't something that I'd recommend doing in a residential neighborhood. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we saw FBI, DEA, you know, everyone out here yesterday kind of uh, researching it. So there was something, and, uh, you know, it's, yeah, just horrible. PG&E said its crews have not found any gas leaks. SF Fire said federal partners are assisting in this investigation. So we, we are hearing the rumors just like you're hearing the rumors. What's important for us is to look at the facts. Everybody saw the tanks coming out of the house. This is definitely something that's unusual to see come out of an actual residential structure fire of any fire in any location. Michael said his tenant didn't notice any red flags about the residents next door. No, I, I mean, t he never said anything to us, and to my knowledge, it wasn't suspicious. I mean, um, what do they say, hiding in plain sight, right? This homeowner two doors down said her son, who lives at the property, didn't know much about his neighbors. It's San Francisco. It's a city. And you don't really get to know the people around you. It's not like you live in a big apartment building where you might get to know your neighbors. It seems to be that there weren't any unusual comings and goings no. in the house. Yeah. Yeah. The power of the blast is evident up and down the block. It blew this door right off its hinges at a home across the street, and it shattered multiple windows. The house that I grew up in, just on, just in shreds, just soot and uh, you know debris everywhere. So it's just, um, yeah, it's it's hard. And a source with SFPD said that when officers called the suspect tonight, he then turned himself in, also adding that several neighbors in the area told police officers that they could smell marijuana coming from this residence long before that explosion. We're also learning that the caretaker of the woman who passed away was doing laundry just before that explosion. Sarah, she had apparently just started the dryer before the blast. Oh my gosh, just so scary and so scary for all of the neighbors. Just a really unfortunate situation. Betty, thank you for all of that reporting. We appreciate you very much. Well, what has also been so devastating about the explosion is that some of the neighbors right next door to that house lost almost everything. Our crew got a look inside earlier today, and we show you what a long road ahead it'll be for one family who has to start all over. <laughs> the firemen were able to take me to the back of the house downstairs to grab the coats. Just one look at the inside of Karen Lay's house, and it's clear life is not going to be the same after the blast, at least not for a while. I, I guess you need to see it, but it's, it's red tag. So for sure, it's, it's, it, the house is, is, is in a bad shape that's not livable anymore. We don't have all this time. Where's your plastic bag? Here, put it in your backpack. Today, Karen and her family had one job, basically all they had time to do, get their stuff out of their home as quickly as they could and leave. They had no idea when they'd be able to come back. Their bathtub was filled to the brim with wood and debris. So was their bathroom sink. 
The explosion, which happened immediately next door, was so strong it knocked out their ceiling, the wallpaper limp and hanging off the walls. The blast ripped a hole in the drywall of their bedroom. No part of their house was untouched. Wow, just unbelievable to see all of that damage and to think that was the house next door. And the investigation into the explosion also led to an hours long hazmat situation today in Daly City. A white box van carrying evidence from the house had to suddenly pull over. Firefighters say canisters in the back of the truck might have started leaking. We were there earlier this morning at the house when firefighters were loading gas cylinders and a blue barrel into that very van. But around 9 o'clock, while en route to the evidence storage, Area, the driver noticed something was wrong. One of the items that was being transported started to hiss. The driver of the vehicle pulled over, called 911, which initiated a hazmat response for a substance within one of the cylinders collected for evidence. The intersection of John Daly and Junipero Serra had to be closed off. Hazmat crews rushed in. Police even used a robot with the bomb squad. Eventually, they capped the leak. The situation also, as you could imagine, made a mess of the BART commute, the station very close by to that scene. Service between Balboa Park, Colma, and Daly City stations shut down until 2 o'clock this afternoon. The streets were reopened later, and the van was eventually driven to the evidence storage area.